All right, guys, so now we, we took a look at what our, our in-season image looks like here in Maysville. Um, I showed you a little bit about uh, how to read the map, we talked about the variability that we see from the, the dark reds to the dark green. So uh, Jeff and I are now out in the middle of the field uh, based upon what our imagery told us and are going to talk a little bit about now of uh, what we can do based upon the variability and some certain agronomic practices with that. So, um, so Jeff, you can see here we've got a patch that's really you know sparse and then we've got another patch here that might be a little bit more lush as we saw on the NDVI map. Um, tell us a little bit more about what you kind of see out here and and how we can use this this map to manage. Sure absolutely so you dial the differences in quite a bit here just to be able to pull from this is uh, the, the smaller plants from that area behind us there a little bit and the tall plants are obviously right where we're at here today. So just to give a little bit more of an idea you look at, you know, again, plants that are B4 to plants that are... This one looks like it's right around that B1, 2, 4, 3. So, yeah, that, so size, staging in the crop is very similar, right? But overall biomass is greatly different. So go back to that, that ROI piece I talked about earlier. Which spot of the farm are we going to want to take care of and really make sure that we optimize maximum yield versus other spots of... Uh, other field that we know that you know it's struggling either due to the water or you know multitude of, the stress of 2019 let's face it uh is a, is a big reason for a lot of these smaller plants it's not to say that they're not going to produce you it's just that they're not going to be able to generate that that factory that plant production factory as fast as what these plants in my hand would um, so if you look at that just from a, a, a side of how do we even attempt, Nathan, to be able to, to drive, say I want, you know, through tissue sampling and, and different aspects, say we find a, a, a deficiency. Yep. Yeah, that deficiency isn't, obviously in this field, isn't going to be widespread. It's going to be, you might see a deficiency over there that's different than right here where we're at. How do we start to go about trying to, trying to create different application methods to, to adjust for that? Yeah, I think that's a great point. You know, you can utilize these uh, NDVI maps. You can take your tissue samples, like you mentioned. You know, um, whether you're gonna, the grower's gonna give, you know, I'm gonna call it the groceries to his crop, you know, given the season, and making sure that he's optimizing on his ROI. He may not want to give it to a spot that is maybe really sparse. You know, that, that may not pay. Um, but when you look at some of these plants, you know, you can see that you know there still is an opportunity and some potential out here. So let's make sure that. Uh, so Jeff, you know, based upon what we're kind of seeing out here, I mean, if you were to give a recommendation to a grower, you know, from what we're seeing, you know, what, what are some of the things that you would look at and maybe talk to them about? Sure, you know, so there's certain things that from an agronomy world that we can't correct, right? We can't, anymore now this crop is planted, we can't really correct uh, how deep that seed was placed or really that initial, that initial start. Um, coming up out of the ground. You see, you know, just the difference in, in root masses there, you take single plants, crop obviously, these seeds are planted within minutes of each other, uh, yet just different little different soil environments. You see that the root structure here on this one is is, is greatly improved and that's led to the higher biomass. Um, it, you know, and, and from overall seeding depth, we, we can't really correct what it that is. It is what it is. So what factors can we do today? At the you know, biggest thing is we look at approaching V5 corn, we know that we're going to be laying down some type of post herbicide. That's that's a common practice that, that really doesn't change in 2019. Weed control is still a big priority. It's just a matter now, what can we add to this in that tank mix to really benefit, whether it's a macronutrient uh, uh, or a foliar micronutrient, something like that. Uh, if you look at the big uh, big fertilizer pieces that, that move with a lot of water, a lot of rainfall that we've had. Anytime you, you, you start to look at rainfall, you really got to address nitrate, sulfate, and, and borate. They just move down through the soil profile. So is is that something that we can add? And, and really from a tissue sample side, that's what we hope to identify here later today. So you're saying some next steps for me, you know, if I were a grower were to, to ask about, you know, having my, has my field been tissue sampled to see what, what's going on out there. And then, um, you know, if, you know, I, the way I understand it, you know, there's a lot of uh, side dress and top dress applications out here as well. So this is another opportunity that we can use an NDBI map um, to look and see what the variability is and then go look at the field forecasting tool to help a grower make sure that when he's making that side dress application, he's putting the right rate down and has the right timing. Spot on.